In this episode, we talk about how do you increase your sales quickly. So not in the short term or the medium term, in the immediate term, how do you increase sales now? And secondly, we take a second question today. We take a question around how do you onboard your first few staff members while ensuring the quality that hopefully you care about so much stays in play. I'm trying to shape history, put them from the sky for some strength to take with me. Line up the stars, I fly away quickly and push the world forward like a tidal wave hit me. I ride the wave swiftly, I fear no man, check my titles mate quickly. Came from the sky with the light of day in me, you grew my own wings. Funniest person on our team. I don't want to give anyone a big head, but have, I think I know who. Who? Maybe Grant. Yeah. GL? Yeah. Yeah. Sean's pretty funny too. And the thing with GL is you don't mind laughing at his jokes because he's so bad at table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> don't you reckon, Shawnee? He just beat me today. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <absolutely nothing. laughs> taking the higher road. Rosie, what is our question for the day? Okay, today our question comes from Carly from Instagram. She says, Jack, if your business was struggling to keep sales numbers high, what would be some immediate things you would do to make large amounts of very quick sales? Yeah, large amounts of very quick sales. <laughs> Just a small ask, Carly. So what I would do is I would uh, l go through and revise your entire marketing and sales process, right? What I've found in situations like this where you need to make a substantial change, or, you need to affect a substantial uplift. The substantial uplift probably won't come from a substantial change. Why? Because you need to do it quickly, right? Like the medium term, well, short term, as opposed to immediate term, short term stuff is I'd look at product to market fit. I'd look at the brand positioning. I'd look at why people aren't buying. I'd do a lot of consumer insight type stuff. Kelly, you don't have time to do that if you want to see a massive spike in sales quickly. Right, And so if you want to see a massive spike in sales quickly, while doing all of that in the background, maybe 25% of the time, right? look at the positioning, look at why people aren't buying, look at the products themselves, do we have product market fit? And in order to sort of substantiate or validate any of your thinking or any of your assumptions around any of that, speak to your consumers. I understand uh, it's a product-based business. So if, given that it's a product-based business, you might need to go and talk to the retailers that you reach out to. Whoever it is that buys your stuff, um, go and do that, right? But that's the more short-term, medium-term stuff. In terms of the immediate-term stuff, um, what you would do is this. Look at everything you do from the ads that you have online to the brochures that you send to retailers to the brochures or the landing pages or the collateral in whatever form that might be that presents your products. Uh, look at all of it, right? And then look at how we're generating leads and what is the conversion from uh, contact to lead? And then what is the conversion from lead to qualified lead? And at each stage of the process, there will be things that we are, you are doing in order to move somebody through the buying journey. I would map that out, right? There's probably a sequence changes in every business, probably a sequence of, from lead, well, from, from awareness through to sale, there's probably a eight to 12, maybe 14 step journey. Like we have this ad on Facebook, they click on this ad on Facebook, they go to a landing page, from the landing page, they go to this page, from this page, we ask for these details, from that page, they get this, and then we call them, and then we get the, you know, what are the different steps and stages of your marketing and sales customer journey? And then I would dissect and, like pull apart every single stage because if you can increase the effectiveness of eight you know let's say there's eight steps in your process you increase the effectiveness of each of those steps by say five percent that's forty percent cumulatively in fact probably more if you compound the five percent if you want to get really technical uh, and therefore uh, you will see a substantial increase in your sales figures by going through and making what might seem to be relatively minor tweaks, but you make relatively minor tweaks along the journey and it results in that substantial uplift that you're looking for. So I'd go back to basics, right back to what, is the, what does a person see when they know nothing about us? What do they then see when we start talking about who we are? What do they then see when we call to action to generate a lead? What then happens when after they've you know, progressed through our lead funnel, whatever that might be? What do we do through a sales process? 
if, if it's a three or four stage sales process, can we make it a two stage sales process? Are there things we can do around pricing in the immediate term in order to generate more sales in the immediate term? Are there more favorable payment plans we can put in place? Right, there's like it's an infinite number of different tactics, but you will know what, well, you will get greater visibility as to what they are when you look at your entire process, strip it apart and rebuild it. That was a good question. That was a good question. Thank you for that, Carly. I think we should do another one. Two questions in the one episode. How are we going for time? Mm, about five minutes in. Okay. We'll Can do another, another one. We'll do it quickly. Okay. I don't think that's possible. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> So Shorty just stopped filming because he thought that we were done. <laughs> but we're not. We're going to get a second question, Shorty. Pay attention. Okay, so this one's from Nikki. She asks, my partner's a tradie, not an entrepreneur, but we get so much value out of your advice, Jack. Could you please advise the best steps for him to take when he needs to add another staff member? How does he ensure the quality of work continues if he removes himself off some of the jobs? Yeah. And would one of your programs suit his business? I love that last question, but in particular, you, you, you bottle the standards, right? So, Nikki, your partner would... Nothing, nothing that exists in anybody's mind is... Um, how am I, what am I trying to say? There's nothing that your partner does that can't be articulated, systemized, and put into a process, right? Even if he's coming at it from the deepest, most intuitive level, you know, he's a great carpenter and he goes in and he, there's still eight or 12 or, why is eight and 12 a number for us today? There's still like eight or 12, how many, 20 things that he looks for. Or when, once a job is done, there's a certain process that he goes through. The process isn't written down by the sounds of it, but there's a certain unconscious maybe process that he goes through in order to ensure that the job has been done to a certain level of quality. By the way, obviously this is so critically important, not just for carpentry businesses, but for all businesses and the principles apply regardless of what business you're building. There's a process that he goes through. What he needs to do is bottle that process. So it's probably someone like you, Nikki, asking him, let's assume your partner's name is John. John, when you come to a job, what are the quality indicators you are looking at initially to scope out uh, what kind of job you're going to do. And then when you're doing that particular job, uh, what is the process that you're going through? And you ask him questions and you literally sit there and you write out a one through 20 stage process in terms of what he does. And then, so John, once that job is done, what are the key things, well, no, what are all of the things you then look for to ensure that that job has been done satisfactorily and to the expectations of both you and that particular client? And all we need to do really in, in this instance for one staff member, all you really need to do is start just creating checklists. And then when John, assuming his name is John, onboards this staff member, firstly, in the, in the kind of recruit that you're looking for, if, this is a, if, if quality is a large part of the expectation of this person, that needs to be expressly stated and tested throughout the recruitment process. Is this somebody that shares John's standards? Is it somebody that shares John's uh, demand for high quality and demand to meet expectations. That's the first thing, they need to be the right person. Provided they're the right person, when they come on board, that person follows John for a week to every single job and holds the checklists that you guys have nutted out before this new person has come on board. And John says, now, this is what we're looking for. We're looking at that, we're looking at that, we're looking at that. And they go through the checklist of scoping works, delivering works, assessing the quality of works after the job. You know, so really that might be three checklists, maybe four or five if there's more to it. Um, and the person and, and is getting a feel for how these checklists comes to life on the job. So in summary, Nikki, it's about defining the expectations. It's about developing a written process that captures the expectations. So right now, John has the expectations. You, you just need to help him to put them into writing. And then it comes down to getting the right person on board and ultimately training in those behaviors by getting them to shadow John or follow John for a week to however long it's gonna take given this particular business and skill set um, to a point where the person who's come on board is really, really clear. Now. That's not enough. You then need to have accountability, right? And so every job that this new recruit goes and does, he then needs to sign something at the end and it might be that checklist itself, or obviously everything happens online, they say. So it might be that he digitally signs a checklist online once it's done and that gets sent to John 
at the end of every job to say that this checklist has been followed. If then at any point, and it will happen, so give him grace around it, it will happen. If a client ever says ABC wasn't done, John's got the checklist to go, mate, you signed this, you know, to his new recruit, you signed this to say that A, B and C was done, the client's telling us it wasn't done, what's happened? And that might be he's dropped the ball, that might be there's, a, there's gaps in the particular system, or might be that the client is being untruthful, right? There's probably one of the first two. And so there'll be iterations of the processes as the two continue to check through accountability uh, what has been complete in the eyes of the client. It's, rel it's a relatively simple thing to do at this stage of the game and, and totally, totally doable. So Nikki, I'd help him with that if I were you. Wasn't a short answer. Fuck. <laughs> it's I fine. I don't know if I can do short I know, answers. I know, I know. I just, my, where, see, this is where expectations come into play, Nikki. When I say, oh, I'll do a short answer, Everyone gets let down because I never do it. So it's always about setting up the right expectations. Thank you for tuning in, guys. We have a launch intensive coming up. We have recently taken one of our programs we usually do over four months. We're condensing it into five days. It is called the, on, uh, the Andres Launch Boot Camp. Yeah, yeah. The Launch Boot Camp would be an easier way of saying it. Um, and it's coming up super soon. Uh, if you are interested in you know if you're an early stage business owner or you haven't yet started and you're looking to become an early stage business owner and you're looking to get advice and education around all of the fundamental building blocks as to how to build a great company how to achieve product to market fit uh, how to leverage your marketing how to develop a sales process how to define the vision mission values of your company so it's got a dna and it's got an ethos and it's got a brand that truly speaks to people and touches the hearts and minds of your audience uh, then this is the five days for you if you're interested to learn more about it, just type yes into the comments below. The lovely Rosie will reach out to you uh, and have a chat to see if that's a conversation worth having. Guys, thank you tuning. Thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next time. So what the